Okay, so this is the reassembling of uh, Railway Arctica 2 5000 and first off we're going to start with the spool and uh, before we begin, uh, I think it's better if we put on this one first because this one has this ever so small spring so anything with like this, it's better if you clear it up first and yeah, okay so let's begin go and then this one's lying to here All right and a little bit more grease here and take this clip and just snap it on and we're good to go with this one uh, so we're going to set this one aside and next we're going to assemble the clicker first off make sure you grease the screw hole and this one right here so this is the bearing this bearing uh, if you don't have it it's fine if you have one which has been rusted or salted you can still use it because this bearing does not serve much purpose really so the size of this bearing is, let's see here, so it is 7, 4, oops. and the thickness is 2.5, so 7, 4, 2.5, or 4, 7, 2.5. Alright, so this one just squeeze it, put it here, make sure you press it, sometimes it's quite hard to go in, there you go, and you take this clip right here. Now if you lost this grip, uh, this clip, if you lose it, you can make one with single strand wire, not much of a problem. Uh, I think this is number, number 6 or number 7. You can use Marlin or American uh, wire, uh, either one is fine. Alright, so that's it, and now we put on the clicker. Okay, so this is the clicker. And first off, uh, you need to put this one on. Alright, so this one go here. And next the clicker. The spring, I'm sorry, the spring. Alright. Spring will sit like this. There we go. And it's quite hard because we because I've already greased this. So if it's not greased, then it's much easier to put on. All right. Let's see here. So the pointy one will point downwards. Okay. There we go. Make sure the hole aligns. And then you put on the screw. So this is a screw. and then just screw it in, make sure you tighten it before you tighten it, make sure you realign the spring alright, make sure it's in the groove area of the spring alright, give it a few tests alright, and then you tighten it and then make sure it works like that and there you have it and next we're going to put on the drag stack Okay, so next we're going to put on the uh, drag stack. So this is the drag stack, and this particular rear have one extra washer, which is not a problem. But uh, the thing that you have to remember is that this one, this washer here, will sit onto this groove. But you have to make sure that it sits like correctly, like this longer groove right here. So it should sit like that. But this one, uh, it will align itself uh, when you're going to tighten the drag, so you don't have to worry too much. Just make sure that you have the drag stack in correct order. Alright, uh, so first we're going to put on grease onto here. You can put a lot inside here. Uh, it's not a problem. And then make sure you remember to grease the... Uh, what do you call this? The rubber here, the seal. Alright, so we're good here. And we'll proceed with the drag stack. So before you put on the drag stack, make sure you grease this one really nicely. Uh, remember this one is felt washer. You can use carbon washer. Uh, if you have the money, and I think from China it's pretty cheap nowadays, so it is not uh, a huge, too much of an investment. I mean, this particular reel uh, is like a low level kind of reel, so you don't have to put too much investment on this. But if you have the money and you want to have a much better uh, drag performance, then by all means upgrade to carbon tax. I'll give you the measurement. So, the measurement is what is this 20, 21, 21 millimeter, and the inside is roughly 9. So 21 to 9, this one should be 1 millimeter. Yeah, about 1. 1 millimeter. Alright, let's see again. So 21, 9, and 1. You can use 1.2, I think. They have also 1.2 millimeter thickness. 
uh, but for this reel, I don't think you will need uh, 1.2 or 1.5 or 1 millimeter will be enough for this reel. Uh, Alright, so either way, let's begin uh, greasing the uh, drag washers. You don't have to grease. A fat washer usually only need oil, but in my experience, uh, a little bit of grease will help uh, reduce the sound, the squeaky sound, uh, when you use fat washer. Not all the time. I mean, some reels will, will not have that squeaky sound when you use fat washer, but for my personal preference, I would prefer fat washer to be greased, but not too much, not a lot, like just a few dabs will do. So it will require much less grease compared to carbon fiber washer. All right. There we go. You will need to oil this one later, which is not uh, really that hard. Really, you just have to drown everything in uh, oil. Usually, it won't be that hard to oil this because. When this drag works, uh, the pressure will press the oil out from each uh, fat washer, so it will be automatically dispersed, uh, hopefully at least. Okay. And next, this one, the washer, and then this one, and this final washer. And finally, this one. Alright, make sure you grease this nicely. And uh, I mentioned that you have to make sure the four prongs there align with the groove here so usually it will just pop in but we'll see how things will go no it's not popping in so we'll have to align this ourselves all right let's see so it's one right like there and let's see the groove here all right so it should be like this yep there we go all right do this again and finally this uh, wire clip if you lose this, you can easily make money with single strand wire. Just make sure you bend it at this uh, measurement, which I think is about, uh, let's see, 11, I think. 11, 13. Yeah, about uh, 13 millimeter. Uh, 13 millimeter. So you just have to bend wire to this much. So you don't have to bend a lot. And make sure you have this too. Uh, you don't have to make it too long. I mean, this much is enough. Uh, I think this is number 6 wire, or maybe number 7. Marlin and American Fishing wire, both are fine. You can use either one. Alright, so that's it for the uh, spool. Uh, it's pretty easy to assemble and disassemble. Just for the drag stack, make sure you have the proper, uh, what you call it, the proper sequence. Uh, sometimes people will, uh, like, the first washer that I put into here is the one with the ear. Sometimes people will put on the one without ear first, which is also fine, not, not much of a problem. Uh, if you follow the original sequence, it's fine. If you don't follow it, it's also fine. It will not affect uh, the performance of this reel, particularly this size, too much. Okay, so that's it for the spool. And next, we'll move on to the rotor. Alright, so this is the rotor of uh, Ryobi Arctica 2 5000 and the uh, handle. So first off, we're going to uh, reinstall the handle. And before we do that, uh, in order to get, sometimes the screw will become loose when you use the knob, when you reel it. So, but most of the time it won't, but sometimes it will. So in order to prevent the screw from becoming loose, you have to use a uh, screw glue or thread locker. In this case, I will use this one. Uh, I've used this one for quite some time. Uh, you can use Loctite. I think Loctite is much superior. Uh, what number I forgot, but uh, when you're buying this one, you have to buy the one which uh, does not have permanent bond, meaning that you can unscrew it later. Uh, in this case, uh, for Vizvela, I use 6642. The blue one, the red one, uh, is permanent, and this one is not permanent locking. So, uh, how much do you need? Well, that's the main question for everything, right? Now, in order to apply this, I will just take, oops, oh, so just a little dab right there, and I'll just smear it inside here. It will take some time before the bond will set, so you will have plenty of time to do everything. Alright, so we'll start by greasing, as usual, greasing everything. Uh, this one is prone to salting, so make sure you grease everything very nicely. But then again, as usual, not too much. Alright, grease here. Alright, so we're good here, and next we're going to put the bushing. Uh, and I think it's better if I give you the measurement, just in case if you lose this. You can change to a carbon fiber, uh, I mean ball bearing, not a problem. So this one is 7. Four, 
2.5 or 2.36 you can use 2.5 not a problem and for this bearing uh, it should be the same measurement the thickness is 2.5 and it should be 7 yep and also 4 yep 7 and 4 okay so put on the bushing and then uh, it's better if you put the spacer sometimes you will find 2 sometimes you will find 3 so if you have just put everything on Right. Uh, make sure it sits nicely. Right, there we go. Okay, and next we'll put on the bearing. Uh, the bearing, sometimes it's pretty hard to get it in. Sometimes not all the time. Right, so there we go. Uh, this one will be a little bit tacky because we put grease onto the rod. If you don't want to put grease, it's fine. But if you're using this for salt water, then I would highly recommend that you use grease. Okay, and finally, the screw. Alright. Sometimes it's a little bit of funny business to put on the screw, but you have to do it anyway, so if you have a magnetic screwdriver, this one will be very, very easy, which I have, but the magnet is no longer as strong as it was before, and this time looks like it's playing for me. There we go. And finally, let me screw this one in. Right, that's good. Uh, you can tighten it as much as you can, but you have to make sure that uh, it does not uh, press onto the bearing too much. Alright, so in this case, the bearing is still fine. Alright, so we'll go all the way. There we go. And finally, a little bit more grease here. And we just screw this one on. Right, that's good. And uh, for maintenance, you only have to use oil. You can oil here, and if you have the time, remove the screw and put a drop of oil, not too much, but just one drop will do. And for oil, I would prefer synthetic, but pretty much any oil will do. I know guys who use uh, outboard motor oil, and in my case, I use sewing machine oil. It's not the best, but if you use it often, it's quite fine for most usage. Okay, so there we go with the handle and knob, easy construction and easy maintenance. So we set this one aside. And next we'll proceed with uh, the rotor and first of all uh, we're going to grease everything and make sure you grease this one very nicely inside and out uh, i will put grease onto inside here but for now i'll leave it uh, for the final uh, reassembling okay so make sure you grease everything very nicely this one is very prone to salting corrosion if you don't uh, regularly wash your reel then i would highly recommend you reduce the grease but for my preference and for all the reel that I service, I really like uh, to grease everything very, very nicely. Alright, and next we'll put on the rotor brick here. And grease again. And then we'll put on the spring, but before that we're going to put this one on as well. And for the spring as well, make sure you grease it very nicely. And next here. Now, uh, this one, uh, either side is fine, but sometimes you're going to find uh, one which have a sharper angle and the other one will have a much more or less sharp angle usually the sharper angle will go here usually but not all the time and in this case I believe this one is the sharper one a much more towards the 90 degree so we're just going to put this one on and next you take the bail arm and same thing grease it very nicely but then again not too much and this one you have to be very careful make sure your thumb is always on the spring because this one will shoot out if you're not careful. Alright, there we go. Give it a test, seems good. And next you take the screw. This is a torque screw. I never like this kind of screw, but then again, this will use a screw, so nothing much can be done. You can change this to other screws actually. Just get it of the same diameter and you should be good to go. Alright, should be fine. And be careful not to test without putting a thumb here. In this case, it works. There we go. And next, we're going to put on the cover. Uh, you can grease the cover. You, If you don't want to grease, it's fine. And with my personal preference, I prefer greasing everything very nicely. Alright, so this one just slide it on, just like that. And finally, the screw. This one also uses a stock screw. And as usual, you can uh, change this to a regular screw. Just make sure you have the same diameter and the same size, uh, the same head size, and you should be fine. And 
there we go. All right, and next we're going to put on this one, the bill wire. As usual, grease everything very nicely. There we go. Put it in. There we go. Feels good. And put on the screw. Sometimes put it on just put it on the screw. It's, uh, funny business. But it has to be done. Grease. You don't have to grease at this point actually, but I always find that salt to collect here if you don't grease it. So for my personal preference, as usual, I would prefer everything well greased. Alright, and we'll tighten this. There we go. Feels good. Alright, and finally this one. So this will have two plastic washers on the line roller. So one will sit here. There we go. And the other one will sit here. There we go. And finally the uh, line roller. Alright, so this side right here will go here. Hold on, I forgot to grease. You don't have to grease actually at this point, but this is gonna this way is gonna be used for salt water, so it's better if you put uh, you can put grease and as usual not too much. Alright, there we go. Oops. There we go. Alright, and then finally we put on the screw. As usual, this one uses a stop screw. Not the best screw to use on fishing reels, but the most high-end fishing reels now they use stop screw. You can use stop screw, but make sure you do good maintenance. Uh, the screw head will last a very long time. But make sure you do do very good maintenance on those fishing reels. All right, tighten it. Give it a test. Make sure it's rolling nicely, and then uh, a drop of oil. Maybe two. Oh, oops. Give it a little bit of spin, and finally we put on this one. And there you have it for the rotor and handle. Not pretty, not like it's very hard. Uh, the construction is very simple for both uh, the handle and the rotor. Nothing complicated at all. All right. And next, we're going to assemble the real main body. Okay, so this is the main body of the reel, and this will have a quite simple design, overly complicated. And as you can see here, there's a lot of scars, because uh, previously the reel was, uh, like when I first received the reel, when I first this reel for the first time, the reel was like really salted, so I have to pry it. So this is uh, from the prying this one out. But now, well, this is what the condition is, uh, after two, two times, now this is the third time, so it was serviced by me, and this is just the third time I serviced this reel, so... Uh, Everything is still in good condition and hopefully it will last for another 10 years, hopefully. But then again, this is like uh, not a very uh, expensive reel, so I don't expect it to perform above 10 years, but if it can, then why not? Okay, so let's begin. Uh, we'll first put on the uh, switch and a few others, and now we're going to grease everything. Uh, I would prefer you grease the whole reel. If you don't want to, it's fine, but uh, from my experience, uh, reels that have uh, been smeared with grease, like the one I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing here, uh, usually lasts much much longer than the reels uh, that is not greased like smeared into the inside of the board. You don't have to do like too much, like a little smear, a little dab here and there will do, but make sure that all the covers inside here and inside here and also on the side plate is well greased. Okay. Alright, so I think that's it. And first we need to put on this leaf right here. So this one will sit uh, here. Okay. Sometimes it's quite a challenge to put this on. It's not hard, it's just uh, it's a small part of pipe fitting, so it will make sometimes it become a huge nightmare. Alright, okay, so in this case it's cooperating well, so we're done there. And next we're going to put on this one right here. Make sure you grease, you can see this is quite uh, oxidized, so make sure you put a lot of grease here. Not too much, but then again it's uh, significant enough, so we put this one on first. And then, put this one, this one will sit here. Here. There we 
go. You just should slide into the hole there, make it really easy. Alright, and we're good here, and next we have to put on the screw. So it's a small screw, like really small. If you lose this, you can still buy uh, it online, just have the uh, diameter of the screw, and you're good to go. Alright, let's see. Alright, so we're good there, and next the spring. Uh, make sure you don't lose this one. You can make it with uh, sheet metal, but just make sure you don't lose it. You can make it, but it's not that easy to make. It will become quite a bit of a nightmare if you take this one for granted. Alright, so this one just push it in. It should go in pretty easily. Like that go. So this is normal. There we go. As you can see, it spring out. So it's normal for it to spring out. Uh, most servicemen will lose it during servicing if they're not aware of what they're doing. Okay, but basically just be careful when you're dealing with spring. You know the spring from the rotor. If you have Shimano reels, it will have another spring here and a lot of other springs. So just be careful when you're dealing with springs. Okay, so okay, so we're done there. And next we're going to put this one on. So, so as you can see, this, this one has one little dot right there. So the dot will sit uh, like that. Some uh, Ryobi rails will have the dot sit like that, like on this side. So it will depend on the model. For this particular one, this one will sit like that. Maybe in future production, they will change the position of the dot. Because I've seen there are ones that will have two dots. It sits both across like that. One will have like this one, one dot, but it will sit like that. So before you disassemble the reel, make sure you take a few pictures along the way. And make sure you put it on uh, the same way it came out. And you put it in the same way. Right, so this one will just slide in. Usually you just slide in. There we go. And we're good here. And next we're going to reassemble this one. Uh, for all entire clutch, it is much uh, more preferable. You don't assemble it with grease. But for this particular type of entire reverse, you won't require grease, but grease, a little bit of grease will help with uh, the reassembling of the clutch. So this one has eight uh, rollers. If you lose one, it's still fine. If you, if you lose two, then you're going to have a little bit of a problem. It will not have the same grip. And you won't find this sleeve. Uh, you can find it, but it won't be easy to find. And it won't be cheap either. It's a simple... It's a simple part. Uh, some people will make it. Uh, they have, if they have the ability, then by all means do it. Uh, you just have to get the diameter of this leaf, and then just buy a rod, a round rod, and then just cut it out, and then just grind it until it's up to size. But if possible, don't lose it. If the sleeves are rusted, uh, in most situations you can still use it, but we will hear a little bit of raspy sound. But you can change it. I mean, you can buy this one from a Ryobi, but not all Ryobi uh, service center will honor the parts uh, replacement or will honor parts buying or selling. So just make sure you're careful when you're dealing with this one. If you don't, then you're going to have uh, quite a bit of a pain. Okay, so this one will go in just like this. There we go. And next, we're going to put on the uh, pinion gear. I would highly recommend that you clean inside here with uh, fine steel wool. Or if you don't, then Scotch Bright will do. And make sure you clean uh, your spray, something to clean it up, like a uh, carburetor cleaner to clean everything back. Like you don't have to put a lot of grease here, because you can grease the teeth later. But you have to grease this one right now. Uh, this one will collect salt water, uh, and, and it will collect salt, and it will make your life miserable, <laughs> especially when you're fishing, you hook on big fish. So if you're servicing this, make sure you grease here and this part uh, well, but then again, not too much as usual. Just grease it well, and you should be fine. And maybe a few drops of oil along the way every now and then, and this part should last for quite a long time. Okay, now sometimes I do find a washer here. I do find a washer here. Sometimes I find both up and down. If you don't have it, it's fine. If you want to put it, it's also fine. But I wouldn't really uh, like care about putting washers if if you don't like have it. It's fine if you don't if you have it. It's fine if you don't have it. It's fine. Most people won't even bother, including me. But then again, if you have it, by all means put it. All right. So this is the spring. So the spring will sit like this. Hold on. We'll put. We'll try and put this side first and see if it make things much easier for me. Alright, so I'm going to use a much uh, smaller tweezer here. There we go. And then another one on this side. Alright, so there we have it. A little bit of problem with this one. But now it's in. And next you put on this one. So this two notch here will sit here, both sides. It's to prevent this spring from popping out. Like it's doing right now. Yep, today is really not today. Oh, it's this side, okay. Okay, so let's see. 
Okay, so thankfully it went in nicely. So make sure uh, the two notches go there, and this one, the flat one, sits like that. Okay, and next we're going to put on this one. So as usual, uh, grease it. This part is also one of the parts uh, that can easily be uh, salted. So this is the bearing. I'll give you the measurements for this one. Okay, so this particular one is 16, 8, so 16, 8, and 5. So 8, 16, 5, or 16, 8, 5. And this one will sit here. There we go. And a few drops of oil. Okay, this one just press and it should go in just like that pretty easily. A little bit more here. For now, it's a bit uh, sticky. Uh, not, not sticky, like uh, hard to turn for now because we still have the grease there. So in order to make it lighter, you have to use oil with solvent, which in this case I use uh, sewing machine oil. There are a lot of brands of the same thing, so you can use any brands. Okay, next grease this. Make sure you grease the screw holes. There we go. And... nope. There we go, so make sure this one coincides with the part right there. And then you put on the screw, so these are the three screws. Uh, you won't mistake any for other screws. It's pretty straightforward with this one. Okay, just put it on. It will go on quite easily. In most cases, I would prefer Philips screw head with the flat screw head grinder. I don't like, like all Philips, because when you have Philips, it's much easier to screw it in. And then you can tighten it with flat head screw screwdriver. But some people prefer Torx. I mean, Torx is not my preference. It's just good looking. Not my personal preference to with Torx. Most uh, high-end wheels nowadays will use stocks because it looks cool, but for maintainability, if you strip the screw head, then you're going to have uh, an, uh, a few inter interesting days ahead of you. Alright, okay, we'll give it a test, and then we'll tighten it. And yeah, feels good. Okay, so we're done here. And next, we're going to proceed with the body. And for this particular rear, you have to put on the gear first, and then you put on the shaft. Uh, in some cases, it's quite easy to remove the main gear without move, removing the shaft, but in most cases, it's not. Okay, so before we proceed, make sure you grease the reel, the gears. Uh, you don't have to grease a lot. Just make sure you grease the uh, gear teeth uh, quite nicely. Then again, uh, as usual, I would always say you don't have to grease a lot, which in the reality that is that you really don't have to grease like really a lot. But then again, you still have to grease it. You, I mean, the amount of grease that you're going to need is ample amount, but then again, not too much. All right. Okay, so this one will sit here. This is the oscillation gear. Now this one, right now it's uh, tacky, but when you put on oil with solvent, there you go, now it's smooth. I mean, you can use oil without solvent, not a problem. But uh, for reassembling reels, I would highly recommend you have this one on hand. It's not the best, but it will suffice. Ah, and then I forgot, you have to put the bearing first onto here. Now this one has two sides. The bigger one is for the main gear, for the top, and the smaller one is for the bottom. Now for the bottom side, the measurement is 13, 7, so 7, 13, 4. 7, 13, 4. You have to put this one on first, which I forgot. Well, not really a big problem really. Oop, uh, sometimes it's uh, quite hard to put it on sometimes, but not all the time. Oh, in this case, it's not cooperating very nicely. Oh, right. I don't know what's going on. Usually, it's quite easy to put on, but for some reason today, it's not cooperating very nicely. All right, so there we go. It should fit in snug. I don't know. Not many things are going well today. There we go. Now we're game. All right, a little bit more oil there. Okay, so we're good here. And while we are at it, we're just gonna put on the uh, the gear for the top side. And the measurement for the top side is top gear is fourteen, fourteen seven, and four. So fourteen seven four. Okay, so we just put it on just like that. There we go. A bit of oil. 
All right, and next we're going to put this one on the slider. Make sure you grease inside here. In many situations, if you feel that the reel is when you try to uh, like reel it, it's stuck. So most of the time, it's this part right here. It's either not greased or there's ample amount of salt that it uh, stops the movement of this reel, of this oscillation gear from sliding inside here. Okay. So make sure you put this one on back most. And next we're gonna put on this metal bar right there. So there's a little dented area there. So the ones that one will go inside first. And there we go. Easy does it. Not really hard thing to do. And next we're going to put on the main gear. Now we've already greased both gears, the main gear teeth and the pinion gear teeth. You don't have to use a lot, but then again you have to put it at an ample amount. Okay, so next we're going to put on the shaft, a little bit of oil solvent. Alright, let me show you. There we go. Uh, don't press it too much. Just enough to get it running. Okay, next we're gonna put on the screw. So this one is the screw, you won't mistake it for other screws. It's a screw with flat uh, head. Alright, so we're good here. Give it a few turns. Right now it's tacky, uh, which is normal for a freshly assembled reel. And especially for ones that you grease it like really well, you're gonna have it like really tacky, which is not a problem. Alright, feels good. And next we'll put on the side plate. So side plate, same thing. You grease it pretty well, but then again, not too much. Okay, a little bit more grease here and there. Make sure the spring, the spring, the leaf spring here is snugged. Then you just have to put this one on, it will slide in nicely. Okay, there's one screw here. Make sure you put that one on first. So this is a screw. Uh, it's highly advisable if you grease all screw. Just in case that the owner of the reel is not doing good maintenance on their reels. So grease on screw, uh, most it's not really recommended because uh, it's much more highly recommended that you uh, put on uh, Loctite. There we go. Grease, uh, me, myself, I'm a little bit like, um, not really uh, recommend things with uh, grease, but then again, most of the time, I would prefer things grease. Oh, I think we're mistaken the screw. The screw, I think, should sit here. Yep, the screw sits here. This one will go to here. Don't tighten the screws as yet. Just put it on and then we'll tighten it, uh, everything later. Because we have to test the rotation. If it feels tight, then there's something not snapped in properly. And the camera's battery is about to go out. Alright, feels good. So we're going to finish all the screws first, I think. Hopefully. If we can, the battery's still good. Alright, I'm going to change the battery first, for so if you'll excuse me. Alright, so we're back. Um, so we're going to put on the last screw. Okay, grease it. And as I mentioned before, uh, I would prefer things greased, including the screws. Uh, because uh, just in case that the owner does not do regular maintenance, then one of the things that would give a serviceman a nightmare to deal with are the screws. So if you grease it, all the screws, uh, it will become a little bit easier to maintain. Uh, but if uh, the person, the owner of the reels, you know him, you know them, and you know that they uh, do a good maintenance on their reels, then by all means you can use Loctite to uh, manage the screws. In fact, I would prefer Loctite over grease, but most of the time, grease is the way to go, okay? So give it a little test. Feels a little bit, a little bit slightly. There we go. There we go. Just a little tight. Reeling is good, but I'm feeling it a little bit tight. So okay, there we go. When you screwing the screws in, uh, usually Ryobi will not have too much of a problem. But with Shimano wheels, you have to be very careful. If you make it like too tight, uh, then sometimes the body will be damaged. All right, that's good. And we're there, almost there. Almost, okay, it's tight now. There we go. All right, so I think we're good. And next we're gonna put on this one. Okay, and this one is in. And next we put on this one. 
I don't know what's the function of this one, if it's really necessary for IOB to do this. But uh, this is uh, actually the rotor auto snap uh, mechanism. So maybe it is necessary, but I think it's better if IOB interprets this one uh, to the body. But well, my own uh, preference that is, but in life you have to do what works for you. Okay, so we're good. And finally this one. And make sure you grease this one very well, because this will collect salt. Okay, you don't have to put a lot of grease. Just make sure it's evenly uh, distributed. Okay, we're good here. And then this one should slide in easily. There we go. Now this one has two screws. And this one, a smaller one will go here. And this is top screw. You can change this to other screws if you can find them. In my country, Malaysia, uh, there's a screw vendor inside the uh, shop where they sell screws of many sizes and many types. So you just have to get a measurement, the thickness of the screw and the length, and you should be able to find any. However, they only have hex screw, not a uh, torx screw or Phillips or... Uh, they have some Phillips head, but most of them is hex screw. Alright, and they also have this kind of screw, the ones with the thicker thread. And, oh my god, why is Okay, there we go. Alright, there we go. And finally, the side, uh, what do you call this cover? Uh, now, this will have, I think, hold on. Yeah, you can change it to left and right. So, the owner is uh, right handed, and he preferred the handle to be at the left side. Alright, so let's give it a few more tests. Should be spinning nicely. Yep, it's being nicely just a little bit tacky. It's to be expected and check the entire reverse. Alright, so we're good and we're done with the main body. And finally, we're going to uh, reassemble the whole reel. Okay, so this is the final reassembling. And first off, we're going to grease this area a little bit more. Okay, just a little bit. Uh, I would prefer you grease this one here as well. But it's just my personal preference, you don't have to do this. But for my personal preference, I would highly recommend you grease it. Okay, so we're good there. Okay, and next we'll put on the screw. Okay, so this is the nut screw or uh, rotor. There we go. Right, so there we go. Uh, I forgot what's the number here. Yep, number 12. Okay, feels good. There we go. And we'll put on the screw. Uh, it's this side. Oop. There we go. Right. Okay, feels good. And next, we put on this one. Okay. Grease it. There we go. All right. Yeah. There we go. And then just screw this one in. Should go in pretty easily. So this is normal. You can see this that the. Uh, spool has a little bit of play, this is normal, you don't have to be concerned with this. Okay, and finally we'll put on the handle. I will be expecting a little bit of tackiness, which is normal, but once you use it, um, yep, there we go. A little bit of tackiness, which is normal. Okay, let's give it a good test. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that uh, previously both not both, like all three pinion side bearing was uh, salted when I got it for the first time so I just clean the bearings and reuse it so this is expected as much so nothing strange uh, if you want uh, like a smooth action you just change the bearing and other than that there's nothing else much so the knob feels good and the 
drag feels good and I think that's it for this reel uh, it's a good reel uh, for its price range and make sure you use it within its intended usage you can be used you can use this reel for like 20 pound cobia 30 pound cobia even 40 pounds but I wouldn't go there but I, I think if you're in the Australia or South Africa or America you're gonna get occasional 100 pound shark on this reel but from where I come from this reel is good for its intended use and purpose and not many people will be using this reel for GT but there are some which who does it believe me they do but other than that this reel is a good reel for its intended use and with proper maintenance it should last you like uh, quite and a good amount of time like 10 years no problem without any parts change okay so that's it for Ryobi Artica size Artica 2 size 5000 and make sure you subscribe and like this video and comment on the comment below so if you have any question feel free to fire it away and if you have any reels that you would like me to do a video on, so let me know in the comments below as well. Alright, so that's it guys. Uh, see you guys again.